of Snowbell, the Enchanted Leopard, Chapter 1, written and read by Animal Girl. Living in secret among us is a race of creatures known as enchanted animals. Each group represents a race of animals, from the aardvark to the zebra. Most insects and worms are not included, and has three forms. Beasts, when they take on the form of the animal they represent, human, self-explanatory, and beast-human, a seamless blend of the two. But sadly, as a race of animal begins to disappear, either through natural selection or by human hand, the enchanted animal that represents it begins to disappear as well. Himalayan mountains were rumored to be home to a terrifying creature known as the Yeti. But, unknown to even the native people, the mountains were home to several villages of enchanted animals. Among them, villages of enchanted snow leopards. It was their job to protect the snow leopards that lived in the mountains. They lived off the land, growing their own food and hunting for meat using every part of the animal that they could and wasting nothing. Like others in her village, Snowbell spent her days working in the village, hunting in the mountains, and protecting the snow leopards. Like all enchanted animals, family was everything to Snowbell, and she was at the age where she was old enough to be married. Many of the young males were courting her, not only because she was beautiful, but because her father was the leader of the village. However, Snowbell was very picky. She knew that she had to choose the best mate possible because he would lead the, lead the village alongside her. Snowbell! Someone called. Snowbell turned and saw her little sister Snowdrop running up to her. Snowdrop was only ten, too young to help with the hunting or protecting the snow leopards. However, she was old enough to understand what was going on in the village and start her training. Can I come with you to protect the snow leopards? Snowdrop asked. You know you can't. You still haven't learned all the things you need to know to keep the snow leopards safe. Snowbell, the father called. It's time to go. I'm coming, Snowbell called back. She looked at Snowdrop. Stay in the village and help Mom with the housework, she told her sister. Dad and I will be back before dark. With that, Snowbell followed her father and the others on patrol out of the village. They were going to check on the snow leopards and free any they came across that were trapped illegally, as well as spraying any illegal traps. Any traps used by conservationists to help track and survey the snow leopard population were kept intact. They knew that these traps wouldn't hurt the snow leopards and were used so the humans could help save these beautiful animals. This was the most important job they had. almost dinner time when Snowbell and her father got home. The patrol had been a good one. No snow leopards needed to be set free, and the only traps they found were the ones used by conservationists. Days like this were good. The enchanted animals didn't mind conservationists in their territories, since they wanted to help the wild animals as much as they did. It was the hunters and poachers they couldn't stand. Some enchanted animals had gone as far as taking on their beast form and hunting the poachers, or taking on their beast human forms and scaring them. 
Snowball remembered the stories coming out of Wisconsin of an enchanted wolf taking on his beast human form to scare hunters trapping wolves along a certain road. When Snowball and her father neared the family house, Snowball's mother met them outside, and she seemed upset. This wasn't all that uncommon. If the patrols ran into trouble, the mates and parents of those on the teams would be upset until they saw their loved ones. Loved one was all right. However, this patrol had gone smoothly. Have either of you seen Snowdrop? She asked. I can't find her anywhere. I saw her just before we, the patrol left. Snowball said. She wanted to come, but I told her she had to stay and come home and help you. You don't think she left the village, do you? Snowball's mother asked. She might have, Snowball's father said. She's been wanting to help protect the snow leopards. She might have thought that if she could defeat the patrol on her own, she could come next time. But she doesn't know how to spot the traps or any of the other things for patrol. She could be in real trouble out there. We'll find her. She couldn't have gone far. The patrols searched but couldn't find any sign of Snowdrop. And it had, and it had the entire village worried. Not just because she was the leader's daughter, but also because, like all enchanted snow leopard children, she played in these mountains and knew them very well. To earn money to help the conservation efforts, some members of the village will use coal to darken their snow white hair to hide the spots and work as guides for the mountain climbers. Some of the best Sherpas were actually snow leopards, or enchanted snow leopards. I don't like this, Snowball's father said. The searchers haven't, have lost her scent. Even if she doubled back and returned home, we should still be able to pick up her scent. Something happened, Snowball said. Even if she left the even if she leaves the village, Snowdrop knows to return home before dark. Snow hunter, someone called Snowball's father. We found something. Indentations in the snow indicated that a large cage had recently been sprung. But the scent, but whatever or whoever was trapped inside had been taken away. By the tracks and the scent, the search party knew that Snowdrop had been, had been the one taken. But who would have taken her? Snowball asked. Had to have been poachers, Snowhunter said. The conservationists would have let her go. They must have mistaken her for a snow leopard and taken her away. But where would they have taken her? To the world of man. sending it, um, please send it to either my Tumblr account or my Facebook page. Um, but first off, please be sure to include your name or the name of the author. Um, if there are no names attached to the fanfic, I won't be doing the, a reading. Um, secondly, if it's too long, I will divide it up, um, as I do with my fanfics. Uh, I do like to keep these videos relatively short. Thirdly, um, I will not try to tell you how to write your fanfics, but please try to keep it clean. Um, kids may be watching these videos. I don't want them hearing anything inappropriate. Uh, if there are any words or parts in the story or in the fanfic or story, I mean, if you have a short story that you write that you want me to read, I'll, I'll take those as well. Um, I will clean it up or gloss over it as best I can. However, if there's way too much, I just won't do a reading on that particular chapter. 
or fanfic slash story. Lastly, be honest. I learned that a fanfic or short story was sub written by someone else other than the person who submitted it. I will not only take the videos corresponding to that fanfic and or short story down, but I will also not accept any fanfics or short story submissions from the sender.